Okay, so this is another case where I watched this docu-series everyone was talking about, Tiger King, on Netflix. I wasn't planning on reviewing it, and after watching it, I had to just talk about this. It has that effect on you. It has that effect on people. It's come out at the perfect time where everyone's at home. No one's got anything else to do. You're going to give a docu-series about tigers a shot, or maybe someone wouldn't have given, even given this a glance if this was different times, but it fits right now. And I think what made it more effective in these times we're living in is that it kind of reminds you of the outside world and like things I didn't even realize go on. I mean, I am someone who's born and raised in New York. I'm not used to seeing wildlife in people's backyards. So it was like shocking me. And then just to be that I've been inside for two weeks now straight to see all of this was even had more of an effect of like, wow, this is a thing. This is real. This isn't fake. Like. It's so effective in that way. Then you start to see, as the documentary goes on, it, it starts being more revealing and shocking about the people involved than the actual wildlife you're seeing, which it does such a brilliant job of that. Now, this was directed by two directors, Eric Good and Rebecca Chiklin. The problem with a lot of documentaries and a lot of issues I have with so many that are on Netflix in particular is they get too heavy-handed in a message they have from the beginning and they want to prove. But what these directors do so well is they let the subjects speak for themselves. You don't feel any bias angle being made during this documentary. They're kind of just showing you what it is, what the message it will bring on its own without forcing a message that they want to bring, and you, what you take from it is what you see and visualize. You see how we started this journey five years ago and how much they caught on camera is just incredible. Some shocking, shocking moments. I think that episode one and two were still the best. In particular episode two was some of the best documentary making I've ever seen. That was a spectacle because episode two is where they perfectly divide the time between Joe Exotic, Doc Antle, and Carol Baskin. And it just cuts between them brilliantly because it shows things like, that just shocked me that they don't pay their employees basically anything and how they're all hypocrites and how they all are monsters in the end here in different ways. And it throws you for a loop because you first think, oh, maybe Carol's just gonna be this clear hero. She wants to do good for these tigers. But then they show you that her living environments are the worst out of all of them. So she's rescuing these tigers, but then you're seeing that they're really put in bad situations. You see how much money she's making. She uses the excuse of her workers being volunteers as not paying them, which is just ridiculous. I mean, you're seeing three millionaires here literally treating their workers terribly who do all the work and the hours they work and not getting paid for it and you have a guy like doc antle who is having workers trained through him groomed through him to sleep with him and then you have joe exotic having workers that okay it's a nice thing he has prisoners coming out getting jobs but he's feeding them out of a meat truck from old walmart meat which is just absolutely cruel and insane and to top off episode two showing you things like this is just seeing the relationships of these people with Doc Antle just having multiple women here that he's very obsessed with and that he grooms and people that he's known since they were younger and worked at his park. And then you have Joe Exotic <laughs> marrying two different men at once. And then you bring in this crazy cliffhanger in episode two where Carol might have killed her ex-husband. So from episode three and on, it dips in quality just a little bit. Not a lot, it's still great but the tone kind of slows down a bit. It doesn't have as much of that exotic, magical, different feel. It kind of starts going a little bit towards more just your true crime story and kind of format, but it's still really good. And I am one of those people who am leaning more towards the side that Carol did kill her ex-husband just because the way she talks about it and, and her eyes go up like she's lying every time when she's like, no, that's ridiculous. Like that to me is just guilty enough. It makes a lot of sense or maybe her ex-husband just died in a plane and crashed in the water. Who really knows, but it's super interesting. And there's so much humor drizzled in here. Joe Exotic, like they even say in the documentary itself, you could just film the cameras on this guy and let this guy roll. He's that entertaining. I mean, his music videos were absolutely hysterical. I, I couldn't believe what I was watching when they'd clip into that. And also just them showing clips of his internet show was just crazy. And to have this guy who was filming it for a reality show, you didn't even know if this guy was even very just he believed he was but there's something off about him too and then you didn't know did he burn down the studio but it really looks like joe exotic burned down his own studio and that 
they did such a good job of showing them all starting to care less and less about their animals. In episode five, I thought had one of the craziest scenes where Travis sadly kills himself, especially because they had the footage of someone seeing someone kill themselves. And that was really just heartbreaking and they did a good job of showing how that would just affect Joe Exotic's character. However, from this point on especially, we really don't see much anymore of Doc Antle, which was disappointing. I feel like you could have a whole series on its own about Doc Antle's place. I wanted to learn more and more about what the hell is going on with this guy in his park. And that was disappointing for sure because it really zones in on Joe Exotic. He's great, but it, it becomes more of a one-man show towards the end here. And I would have liked to see more about Carol's situation as well. And then six and sevens where I thought it became just really good quality, but not amazing anymore, where I'd give those two episodes like an eight. You know, it's more reflective. It's more closure to what we already knew was gonna happen where he's charged for hire for murder. It's still really interesting. It's still really well done and you don't know how to feel a lot of the time. And you get this Jeff Lowe character who is really hard to read too, but he seems also very snake-like and knows how to con people. And then you just realize how this ends that like, these people are still around here, you know? And Doc Antle still has his park. It's still running today. It's running through the coronavirus as we speak. So pretty crazy stuff. Again, one of the strong points of this is I think they teach a lot of students who want to do documentaries and film them the wrong message where they're like, make it that you want to show what are you trying to say making this documentary i don't think that's the right way to make documentaries i think the best teaching of it is just to film something interesting let it come out on its own it's different than just filming a regular drama story or a comedy that's where you want to go what are you trying to teach what are you trying to say they did this here really well where they just let a crazy subject take form let a story take form naturally they're not preaching anything to you you're preaching to yourself what you're taking from this this is the facts, this is what these people think and say, and you run with it. And I think that's what makes it so personable and enjoyable. And I think they have here, clearly you could make, unlike making a murder where they forced a season two, you can definitely follow up on these stories here. There's so much more, especially with Jeff Lowe, especially with Doc Antle, there's a whole series of its own I'd love to see just on his park and his lifestyle. Um, and even Carol. So I hope they make more to this story. I think it's there. But as docu-series goes, this is one of the best I've ever seen. I'm giving this one a 9.2 just because again, episode one and two, especially two, were just masterpieces. And they had great shocking moments as it goes on, like the studio burning and Travis's suicide and just a very interesting cast of characters all around. It was so, so well made edited really well too and it shows you this eye about wildlife and a good message that was just shown to about treatment of these animals and how we definitely got to change laws in this country with being able to own wildlife it's i didn't even realize till i watched this how many people still actually do that pretty pretty crazy please let me know what you thought of this docuseries down below i really want to hear everyone's thoughts on it it's an exciting thing to talk about let's get the discussion going here Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss one of my reviews. I review a bunch of shows, movies. I also do celebrity interviews as well, so you don't want to miss any of those. And please follow me at SteveVarley1 on Twitter and Instagram for more of me. And I'll see you next time.